Aug is still the king of tank right now, and this video is going to show you how to use him to dominate. Aug is slow, but extremely healthy. He has a ton of self-sustain with his breather, plenty of damage with his gun, and he is a menacing pick secure with his chain hook. Using these tools correctly can essentially allow you to feel like you're playing on a cheat code as you walk around with the pick impact of a DPS, but the health of a beefy tank. He is simply no joke, and there are four main things to keep in mind in order to dominate on him. Christmas time is here, and Santa has left in your stocking an easy and quick way to get to GM. There has never been a better time to get your membership to GameLeap.com. You can use code SANTA at checkout and get 50% off. Not only that, not only will you get access to everything, but 10 people will be picked for a free VOD review from our top coaches. That is an insane amount of value, so hurry up and click on the link right now and get your membership today. Number one, patience with your chain hook. This is by far the single most important aspect of any Roadhog player. While the cooldown on chain hook isn't super long, eight seconds will start to add up when you only hit one in every five hooks. It's better to be patient, perhaps overall reducing the amount of hooks you are using per minute, but in return also increasing your accuracy. One pick can be a massive fight turner or engagement cue for your team, and it's important that you treat chain hook with the value that it deserves as an ability. It is exceptionally strong, so you should be looking to use it regularly but not rushing opportunities or blind hooking by jumping around a corner and just trying to guess where someone may be. You are extremely tanky. There's almost nothing in the game that can one-shot you, and you have breather most of the time to get you out of really dicey situations. You do not need to rush your plays the same way someone with 200 HP does. Get to full HP and use that hefty health pool to make sure that you can spend a fair bit of time getting your hook out there. Number two, perfect comboing. Okay, so now with a bit of patience and practice, you've gotten to the point where you can land more consistent hooks. This is good, but now it is absolutely vital that when you actually land those hooks, you are securing kills. Having a teammate there to follow up on your hook is always a good thing, but there are just going to be times where you do not have that. So the only person you should rely on for securing the kills off of your hooks is you, and the best way to do that is with combos. Using a right click before you hook is a great way to deal a fair bit of damage while you're stuck in an animation since you have to wait for the hook to go out and then come back, and doing this is going to soften your target up a little bit and increase the likelihood of you one-shotting them with a follow-up primary fire. There isn't even really much of a tip for doing this consistently other than just keeping it in mind just try to remember to always secondary fire before your hook unless they are super close in which case you should use a primary first but just use that extra bit of damage and when that gets comboed with the hook damage plus your follow-up primary fire shot damage and even a melee you're likely to one shot the majority of the roster our third major tip is going to be displacement after landing a hook you can look to your side in order to move your target into a more treacherous location in a lot of cases this can be used to pull your enemy around a corner and away from your team Team, where you can then body block them from getting back while your team focus fires on them. Or on some maps, you can even use it to drop targets off of the map, which obviously would result in an instant kill. Just always be thinking about how you could move the enemy into a more dangerous position than right in front of you if there is one available. The fourth and final aspect of Hog to remember is good ult usage. Oh, Hog is super versatile as an ultimate. You can use it defensively to knock back dangerous enemies such as a Nano Genji or a Primaling Monkey, effectively rendering their big plays useless. Or you can use it to secure picks and get aggressive by quickly killing the enemy tank or close squishies due to the insane dps that whole hog offers always take a look at what your team has to combo with you as far as support ults go such as nano or kitsune try to also pay attention to what ultimates they may use or what plays the enemy may look to make in the upcoming fight to help decide what the absolute most optimal usage for your ult is okay so with all of this in mind we're going to take a look at some of these tips and more in action this is the rank one roadhog player six who gave me permission to take a look at some footage so thank you six but anyway, he uses these fundamental strategies in pretty much every scenario, and due to his extremely strong mechanics and his awareness, he can show just how dominant Hog could be even in the upper echelons of Overwatch. Let's break down some of the key moments in this game on Midtown and talk about why things have played out the way that they have as we go. So let's take a look at how he takes this fight here with the Kitsune. As I said, always be looking out for what can combo with you. The cooldown reduction is fantastic for Hog. What he's going to do is as he's fighting the Sigma here, he's not using his hook yet. He wants the Sigma to use his kinetic grasp. That way he can hook him out of it and stop him from getting the extra health. He easily ends up killing the Sigma. The hook comes back, goes for a nice hook on the Sojourn. And he's just going in and out to try to confuse them and figure out how to set his hook up as it's coming off of cooldown. Very simple, very fundamental ways of fighting. Like I said, 
he's comboing his primary fire before his hook to soften his enemy up and he's paying close attention to what the cooldowns are that way he can get a nice patient hook off that will completely ruin that singlet's chance of survival during this next fight where he is walking up here he's got his whole hog ready he's very patient with it he's not trying to rush it and go in and end up using it just to die he's also patient with this hook the sojourn jumps in front of the orisa but that would have probably been a dead orisa anyway due to his ult but notice how he's setting himself up to have a solid whole hog coming out here he knows they're going to chase him up the stairs because they're seeing oh he's out of position his healers have backed off and he's gone up here by himself he's using that to his advantage that knowledge is going to his advantage because now they're going to try to walk up after him and he's going to whole hog them and now they're stuck in a small area where he can likely get a kill on them as we're going to see with the orisa notice how he tried to go for the right click on the bastion before he hooked there he's still trying to do the combo it just hit this caution bar and in this fight we can actually see exactly how having impatient hook timing can even hurt even the best players so he walks up here his team has used kitsune which is big for him his hook cooldown is reduced he could have easily landed the hook on that sojourn with a little bit more patience while she figured out where she's going to strafe after the boop he instead rushes it and ends up missing it an instant hook on the reaper who raced out of it a very easy hook to land on the mercy that he absolutely should land he lands those kinds of hooks all the time he turns here he's looking for a hook he rushes that one because he's thinking he's gonna die and the reaper just raced out of it but overall that was four rushed hooks that he could have gotten picks from and could have easily turned the battle with so it's very easy to get wrapped up in the moment and rush your hooks more than you need to even for the best roadhogs don't feel bad about doing it at times just try to be better about doing it the next time so as a demonstration of the displacement that we mentioned right here once he gets healed up he looks to hook the sarisa and notice how his hook pulls her around this corner. Now, because it's an Orisa, he opts not to body block her. But if this was something that was like, um, I don't know, say a Reinhardt, someone who has more issues displacing Hong without putting themselves in danger, or like a Sigma is an even better option, he could have stood between the Orisa and this corner so she is stuck out of LOS of her team for longer. He's blocking her path. But of course, it's Orisa. So if he tried to do this, she would just javelin spin and knock him back, and he'd be in a bad position. So he opts to not do that instead, which is the good option. It's just a demonstration of that displacement tip that I mentioned before. Here we have another really important use of that displacement as his team is getting pushed while they're stuck in this uh, high ground. There's only three of them here, but he has his whole hog. So he could make a play in a small room like this, which he's looking to do. He notices they're starting to push. He wants to hook the Sarisa away from the pushing DPSs. So him hooking the Sarisa away from her DPSs is an important use of that displacement because it gives his team a chance to actually walk at those DPSs and possibly get a kill on them. So as we can see, he lands the hook on the Arisa pulls her to the side then he goes for the whole hog and look at how out of position that sojourn is suddenly her and the reaper were both pushing in front of their orisa which forced them to both use their mobility cooldowns now they have low chances of getting out the sojourn does actually die and the orisa dies because she's trying to play catch up with her javelin to get close to her team and as soon as she gets to the top of the stairs her javelin's pretty much running out and there's a whole hog here as you can see she just used her spin so she has no answer to this very very smart use of the displacement that hook can offer. So another thing to pay attention to is how aggressive he plays with Hog because of that self-sufficiency and tankiness. So here he's having to run back away from the enemy team who is spamming him down pretty bad. But he gets a Kitsune, which allows him to walk forward. He manages to kill the enemy Kiriko, and he's just going to keep dancing pretty much in their backline with all of his resources as his self heal will heal him all the way back up to full, even from all that Sojourn's damage. This really allows him to play more aggressively than most other tanks could, and he's abusing that as you can see. All he did during this fight, even though he got a ton of picks was combo well have good patience go for good hooks and be aggressive where the other team can't really easily force him out another big thing about roadhog that i didn't mention in the aspects before is he can be incredibly tricky with good head faking and what do i mean by that okay so here the enemy bastion has just died this Mercy is clearly going for a res. Six knows that the enemy Mercy is going to be resing from right here because she saw her beam. And the enemy Kiriko is down and to his left. He can hear her off of sound cues. You know, there's no sound to this footage in the video, I don't think. But he could hear that she was down there. He drops down and he gives the impression he's going after the Mercy but he turns right when he wants to hook to catch the Kiriko off guard. This Kiriko is going to be thinking, okay, he's going to go after my Mercy. Maybe I'll Suzu her to, to allow us to res. She's probably not thinking, oh, he's just going to turn and hook me. This makes it a really easy hook to land and surprises the Kiriko even when she has her cooldowns to get out of it. Okay, here we have a huge example of a just super fundamental pick on Hog. So he's max HP. His take a breather is coming off of cooldown in two seconds. He sees this Ash over here spamming with the Mercy. He's going to start walking forward he uses his breather to absorb all this damage that's being put out on him and watch how patient he is with this hook 
He really waited until he knew exactly where she was strafing and that she wasn't going to coach gun him away. This allowed for him to land a very massive hook for, with just a very easy and very impactful target. And to cleanly wrap the game up, watch how he walks out of spawn here and uses the combo I talked about. This Sigma here was nearly full health. He got hit with an auto dart, but the big thing is that right before he went for the hook, he fired that primary fire to soften him up down to only a, that's about 100 health right there. Each bar is 25 HP. So he used that to his advantage in order to soften the Sigma up and make him available for a one shot essentially, which is really important in an overtime fight or really just any fight in general. Then just a patient hook on the mercy to wrap things up. And that's exactly how you dominate a game on Roadhog. Thank you guys for watching. Be sure you are subscribed to the channel to always be up to date on news and our educational content that is sure to help you climb. I will see you all again soon. Take care and peace. Christmas time is here and Santa has left in your stocking an easy and quick way to get to GM. There has never been a better time to get your membership to GameLeap.com you can use code Santa at checkout and get 50% off. Not only that, not only will you get access to everything, but 10 people will be picked for a free VOD review from our top coaches. That is an insane amount of value, so hurry up and click on the link right now and get your membership today.